Hello, everyone. Let's get right into the message, okay? Um, I'm going to read from 1 Kings chapter 22. I'm going to read verses 4 to 9 and then verse 14. Second Kings, or I'm sorry, 1 Kings chapter 22, starting with verse 4. And he, he being King Ahab, the king of Israel, one of the most evil kings that ever was, um, and he said unto Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah at that time, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. Now skipping up to verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. I, it has been an interesting time. Um, at the ministry and um, I, w one of the things that is really a struggle and and I I really mean this I want to come on the computer I know it would make me a lot more popular I, I know people would want to watch and listen and read more so if I did that um, and, and I understand that. People, especially in this day and age, they don't want to hear about their flaws or their sins or anything like that. They just want to be justified. And I say to you, I would love to be in the position to be able to do that. I really would. I would like to get on the computer and say, hey guys, you know, you are fantastic. You are wonderful. You are, you are just amazing. And, and God is just blessing you and all of those kinds of things. I, I know yesterday as I was listening to some news reports that the news media is taking a just horrible situation that this nation is in and trying to put a positive spin on it by telling you that inflation is under control. <laughs> yeah, go fill up your gas tank and tell me that inflation is under control. But, but that's the attitude that we want to do everything that we can and and the churches are doing the same thing. Oh, you know, we're, we're, we're just going to sing a patriotic song and then God's going to bless our country. We, we don't need to do all this repenting stuff and all of that kind of stuff. We just need to ask him to bless our country and he'll bless our country. So I thought about this as the king Jehoshaphat is standing in front of the king Ahab and Jehoshaphat is like, well, let's inquire of the Lord. And so Ahab goes and gets these 400 prophets, 400 prophets that come and tell Ahab exactly what he wants to hear. 
Everything's great, Ahab. You just go up and go to battle and God's already delivered Ramoth Gilead into your hands and he's going to bless you and he's going to give you victory. Oh, sing, raise your hands. Oh, praise God. Everything is wonderful. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, he had to have had a stirring in his spirit why did he, after 400 prophets, speak this word of blessing? Thus saith the Lord, this is what's going to happen. Jehoshaphat is saying, um, can we get a prophet of God? Th these people that are standing here, they're not prophets of God. See, there was some discernment in Jehoshaphat to understand the church Christianity has lost its ability to discern and that's why we are running headlong into the rulership of the Antichrist is because we don't have discernment anymore. We have so settled in our minds and decided that we have everything that we need. Oh, we have arrived. We've got our long black robes. We are in everything that we need. We have all the money that we need. We're not in any situation that we need to call on God at all. So we go play church. And Jesus is on the outside knocking on the door. I'm holy. I'm righteous because I'm doing all of these things. And, and the prophet gets up to speak. The true prophet of God gets up to speak. And he might as well just be saying blah, 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 blah. Because nobody's paying any attention to what he's saying anyway. I wonder, I really do, I've wondered that through the years. And, and yes, I know, I know that God told Jeremiah and he told Isaiah and he told Ezekiel, they're not going to listen to you. They already knew going in. I've already talked about that before. I, I've wondered if, if these guys, you know, Jeremiah really got frustrated with the Lord at one point and said, I'm not going to preach in your name ever again. I wonder how many times these guys just sat and thought, um, you know, I don't want to speak this. I, I, I don't want to speak this. Go to Micaiah as he's the one true prophet left in Israel. See, God spoke about the prophets and and you get this misinterpretation of the scripture verse that talks about lay not your hands upon mine anointed Israel. Don't lay your hands upon. But, but we have twisted that so much in the church and we have made it where if somebody puts reverend in front of their name, anybody that knows me knows that I hate that title. Somebody puts reverend in front of their name. They get on TV. They, they, they become this big name preacher. And people say, well, you can't talk about what they are saying. You can't touch God's anointed. There's nothing anointed about those people. There's nothing anointed about these so-called prophets. Read Ezekiel chapter 13. I, I was going to try to read it, but I don't want to take that time of reading through it. But it talks about God's attitude towards these self-appointed prophets that are telling people what they want to hear rather than what God is saying. And that's exactly what is going on in so much of Christianity today. They are mercenary prophets offering their services for sale. You send me a check, I'll tell you what you want to hear. You send me a check and, and God will put a diamond ring on every finger and he'll put you in a $5 million home and he'll give you a private jet and he'll give you a brand new car to drive and he'll give you all these things if you just send me a check. Liars. I, I, I think of Micaiah in this situation as he goes in before 
the two most powerful kings in his area and he's like I'm going to tell you what God says I'm as the Lord liveth I won't dare to speak on my own I will speak what the Lord says would I have thousands of viewers if I put out the videos and said, Oh, God's going to bless you and bless your church and bless the country. Yeah, I would be a lot more popular. I don't want to say the things I don't want. I'm sure Micaiah, in fact, Micaiah said, uh, Yeah, go ahead and go to Ramoth Gilead. God will be with you. That's what you want to hear, right, Ahab? That's, that's what you want to hear. God is with you. So, okay, go ahead and go up there. The reality is, Ahab, you ain't coming back. You're going to rebel against God, and you're going to go up there in spite of what he says. And when you come back, you'll come back dead. It takes a lot to be that preacher in today's society. It takes a lot to be that preacher like Nathan that stood in front of King David at that time, the most powerful man in the entire world, and pointed his finger and said, You are the man. We don't have much of preachers anymore. We have motivational speakers that won't talk about sin, that won't talk about wrong, that won't talk about hell, that won't talk about the fact that what we are doing as a nation is an abomination before God. It's not just sinful, it's an abomination. And it's going on behind the pulpit while we exalt up these Christian prophets. God says, I'm going to judge them. I'm going to strip, read Ezekiel 13. I'm going to strip away everything that they have. I'm going to judge them for speaking peace to my people when there is no peace. And sometimes I just think, Lord, I don't want to get behind the camera right now because I don't want to be Micaiah. I don't want to speak these words. I don't want to see these things. I don't want to hear these things. A few weeks back, I talked to you in a message about the fact that I wanted to see as God saw. I wanted to love people as God loved them. I wanted to see what God saw. That's a tough prayer to pray, folks, because as God begins to reveal things in your spirit, he's not just letting you see everybody else that way. He's letting you see yourself that way. What does God see when he looks at me? And I say with Isaiah, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I live amongst a people that has unclean lips. My righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. So why did I say the other day in one of our videos, I'm a sinner! I'm saved by grace. But we don't want to look at the realities. And so the prophet speaks and all we hear is blah, 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 blah.
I will say what the Lord says. Micaiah was thrown into prison. And he said, If what I say to you doesn't come to pass, then I didn't hear from God. That's why I tell people very, very openly, I am not a prophet. Hear me again. Let me say it again. I am not a prophet. I am not a prophet. There's no profession from me to be a prophet. But throughout my entire ministry and especially over the last few years, one of my friends reminded me of the statement that I have made a while back. I don't want to get on and do videos just to talk. I don't want to get on and do videos just so I can fill some space in for you to spend a few minutes listening to me yell and looking at my ugly face. I don't do videos to just do... I want to do videos that brings the Word of God to your heart. And I know that's going to get us rejected. That's why when those of you that send to me and tell me you watched the video and the Lord touched your heart in some way, that's why I value that beyond words. I cannot tell you how much that means to me. It's not because you're patting me on the back. It's because I know that God is reaching out. And that's why we're doing this. I will speak what the Lord speaks. And the Lord kept speaking judgment to the nation of Israel. He did it through several prophets. There's judgment coming. There's judgment coming. And the people just shrugged it off. It's like, no, like we preached a few weeks ago. I will just continue to burn offerings to the queen of heaven because the queen of heaven gives me what I want. Paul wrote it to Timothy. The day is coming when they will heap teachers to themselves because they have itching ears and all they want to hear is what they want to hear. They said to Isaiah, take the Holy One of Israel out of our pathway because we don't want to hear what he's going to say. They said to Jeremiah, you are lying. God never said that. And Micaiah says, because Ahab says to him, what, what do I got to do for you to tell me actually? Ahab already knew that it was not God's will for him to go up into battle. He already knew that. What do I have to do for you to tell me actually what the Lord says? And Micaiah said, you want to know what the Lord says? When you go up against Ramoth Gilead, They'll bring you back in your chariot full of your own blood. Not very popular. My friends, let me say this to you as I bring this video to a close. When I preach these messages to you, it's not to be a prophet of doom. It's not to bring a doomsday message. It's not to try to intimidate you or frighten you or, or cause you to get discouraged of where you are. Don't do that. It is to call you to your face before Almighty God seeking His face turning from your wicked ways, humbling yourself and praying and saying, God, we need you. I need you. If you take yourself away from me, then just let me die. Because I can't do this without you. It is a call to your heart, to your spirit, to my heart, to my spirit. Most of the time I'm talking to me.
We need a wake-up call. We need to stop hearing the message as it is blah, 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 blah. And we need to start hearing the word of God that is calling us to repentance and calling us to holiness and calling us to change. Not to just accept the status quo in our lives. I'm not trying to get on here and intimidate you. If you are intimidated, what a waste of time of watching the videos. What I want you to do is to not hear the message that Mike Murrow is speaking to you. That's why I've been doing it without notes. Because you don't need to hear what I've got to say. You need to hear what God is saying to you. And he's calling his church, his people, if my people, which are called according to my name, if my people, which are called according to my name, if my people we need to wake up. The world has lost its mind. They're refusing to call child trafficking a major crime. Are you listening to me in the United States of America? Oh God bless America, land that I love. They're making euthanasia read our upcoming newsletter. The law of the land. And they're putting out abortion pills to kill the unborn babies. God bless America, land that I love. Let's wake up! Let's get our mind back onto the God Almighty that is the great I Am. And realize that Mike Merle is not our answer because I'm just as flawed and just as unclean as anybody out there listening to me. But God speaks. I am that I am. Micaiah says, as the Lord liveth, I will say what God says. I hope that you will begin to pray in your life. Not that you can somehow survive the calamities that are coming at us because that shouldn't be our prayer. We shouldn't be concerned about what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink or any of that kind of stuff. We should be concerned about being the church of Jesus Christ. And just as was written by the prophet Joel. We are marching in lockstep with our commander and king and nothing will make us go to the left hand or to the right. We will be his army. That's what we're doing. So if what you're hearing is a prophet of doom, you just simply aren't listening. And I know lots of people aren't listening. All they will hear is blah, 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 blah. But if you're not one of those, then I'm talking to you. Humble yourself and pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. Let God hear the cry of your heart. And when he hears the cry of your heart with the right motivation, he's going to do something amazing. And let me tell you something, folks, and I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger with that. God is doing some stuff that is just amazing. The warrior sword is moving in ways that I couldn't have ever imagined. But it isn't to reach millions. 
it's to reach you and me. Think on that. Thank you for watching. God bless you.